Um, great. And uh, Lucina, could you please paste the meeting notes into the chat window? And um, everybody, could you um, please uh, uh, put in your uh, your name and uh, and company um, in there? It looks like we do have some uh, new folks on the call. Um, so I uh, would love to give folks a, a chance to introduce themselves. And then um, my agenda, uh, I think we'll do a, a short update on the, the CNF test bed. Uh, we are putting together our plans for um, a demo at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona at the end of February. We hope that uh, you and many of your colleagues will be able to come by and, and schedule time to meet with us. I also want to mention that um, if you make a note now on the Wednesday night, and we'll be emailing this out to the, the tug, but it's Wednesday the 26th uh, of February, we're going to have a reception uh, at uh, Mobile World Congress. And I'll mention we did the same thing uh, a year ago, so and two years ago as well. Um, but uh, we'd love to have you join there and um, it would be a chance for uh, this group to meet each other. Um, so my main agenda uh, item is to talk about CNF conformance. And I am uh, working away on a proposal that I, I'm hoping to share with this team uh, relatively quickly. Um, but before I get to that, I, I might ask, I think, um, Scott and Mark from AT&T are new. If you guys could introduce yourselves and then um, if there's other folks as well, please. Okay, now that I found the uh, double unmute. Hey, I'm uh, Scott Steinberg, I'm with AT&T. I've uh, recently um, uh, doing some proxy work on OPNFV. Uh, where um, Ben Hugh was sitting in, and I'm also engaging in CNTT and now also TUG um, related to um, some of the other community work that at and is doing. So um, I'm going to be leading for at and uh, the work that's going on. Hopefully um, I'll bring it together um, more so than maybe was done in the past. So you'll, you'll be seeing my name more often. Thanks. And this is Mark Shostak. Um, I'm mainly focused on CNTT um, and OPNFV as well. Um, so I'm kind of just uh, monitoring what's going on here as it becomes more relevant in the CNF space. Uh, great. Well, I'm going to welcome. I'm going to come back to both of you in a minute because uh, the other related agenda item that I, I'd love to um, cover is to go through um, the your understanding of the plans in Prague as um, as closely as possible. I unfortunately am going to be in uh, in China that week, and uh, I know that Taylor and his team aren't going to be able to make it. But uh, before we go into that, um, can we have other folks who are new to the call introduce themselves, please? Uh, I think Bill from Ludzi, is this your first time joining? And a reminder, if you're dialed in, it's star six to unmute. Uh, yeah, so I'm Bill Mulligan from Ludsa, um, and we have a Kubernetes automation -like platform um, that's going into like the vendor space. So, yep. Uh, Bill, could you just remind Sebastian for me, um, and there might be others on the call who could help with this as well, but in terms of the very cool demo that was done at KubeCon, San Diego that Lutsu was part of, we're still trying to get all of the code that was used in that so that we could take a look at uh, the CNFs and VNFs that were used for it. We're looking for some URLs, please. Yeah, I'll definitely follow up the um, discussion about that. Thanks. Anyone else new? First, call, first time ever? Um, yeah, hi, this is uh, Trevor Cooper from Intel. Um, I'm also um, involved with CNTT and um, uh, have been uh, working in OPNFV for some time on uh, particularly focused on the on performance testing and compliance and 
test infrastructure. So I'm pretty interested in the um, in in the test bed, and I'd like to learn more about that. And um, that's that's the reason I'm I'm joining. Great, welcome. Anyone else? Yeah, hey, this is Igor Jengrosi. I'm uh, with Nokia on the mobile packet core team, um, mostly spending my time on 5G packet core these days and um, just interested in, in following the work in the group. Did Gurgly abandon us? I'm sorry? Uh, do you know Gurgly from uh, Nokia? Yeah, yeah, I, I know him, yeah. Oh, but he's we been on the calls in the past. Yeah, we work in different teams. He works more on the uh, software, Nokia software side. I work more on the IP and optical, which includes uh, the packet core and, and transport. Great, okay, well, you're very welcome. Any others? Okay, well, I, I guess I would ask, um, for some of the folks who are gonna be in Prague, could you, would somebody volunteer to, to take two or three minutes and walk through? My understanding is with the RA2 work there that um, there are some initial proposals to move from a VNF certification in the OVP uh, process to CNF certification. But, and I appreciate that um, that's being done by OVP, by sorry, o OPNFV and by um, CNTT um, and that they have a GitHub repo, but I haven't been able to find um, the work yet that shows how that CNF certification would work. And the, I guess the discussions we've had in the past on the topic are around um, uh, that the, the current uh, VNF certification is mainly focused on TOSCA or heat um, compliance. And so is, is um, Sorry to ask for the new folks to, to jump in, but would anybody be willing to, to step up and, and explain, and not necessarily speaking for CNTT or, or the OVP program, but just explain your understanding of the process? So this is Mark Shostak. I, I can add some color there. Um, so probably the reason you can't find it is because we're really still working on the VNF side, and even before that, the uh, baseline for the NFVI side. So, um, you know, RA2 is, is being developed as an NFVI platform at this point, but the uh, reference certification or qualification hasn't really uh, caught up to it. Um, you know, the, the various phases, the reference, we have the reference model, we have the reference architectures, which are all based on the reference model and then the reference implementation, and then the reference certification. So the, the development is kind of following that path as well. So the certification or qualification portion lags the development of the, the NFVI portion. Uh, so the, to answer your, the first part of your question there. So currently- Yeah, that, that's very helpful. Uh, and I appreciate that it's not just bad Googling skills on my part. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> definitely not. Um, and uh, let's see, so, uh, and there's a, based on what I've heard about the, the CNF test bed, um, you know, there, there are kind of some fundamental differences in the, in the perspective. Um, our perspective in the test bed is kind of a, you know, a, a standardized test uh, regimen that, that's, um, executed against the uh, the VNF or the NFVI under test. And correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding about the CNF test bed, and I guess based on what you said in the agenda, maybe I'll learn more about this, um, is that it's more of a you know proof of concept platform, if you will, um, or you know development level platform as opposed to a um, a machine. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's absolutely the case. And, and maybe I, I, I will call on Taylor to just do a five minute overview of the, the test bed um, since we have several new folks. But uh, the key thing is that, that it's, it's a test bed, not a test harness or a test framework. And so I definitely want to be clear on what it is and, and what it's not. 
Yeah, I think that semantic is an important point because I think it confuses everyone. Uh, but uh, well, that said, I, I mean, uh, I, I'll, I'll go ahead and and um, show my cards here in that the, the proposal that I'm putting together, and I, I would emphasize it, it's very initial state, is that um, this group, I mean, TUG and, and CNCF would create a um, CNF uh, test framework or a conformance framework that would um, help define a set of best practices around CNFs and then provide a set of open source tests to uh, demonstrate that uh, it, it, uh, individual CNFs are following those best practices. Um, but, uh, and, and, uh, you know, a ton of it would be trying to reference upstream software and um, and leverage that, but it, it absolutely would be a harness or a framework in terms of pulling together lots of different uh, pieces. But but that's all relatively separate from the, the CNF test bed. The only difference is that when you when you have a CNF and it passes this framework, you could then also run it on the test bed if, if we wanted to try and do some some performance pieces. Um, but but before I, I get to that whole proposal, I, I would maybe just ask a little bit more on the RA1 work because the the OVP is live today, right? I can bring in a, a CNF to, uh, sorry, a VNF to the University of New Hampshire and have them certify it for me? Um, <clears throat> so yes and no. So OVP is live today and, and OVP actually has been live for quite a long time. Um, initially, um, it was for certifying uh, NFVI platforms. And recently, uh, to your, your earlier point or question, um, a, um, a VNF type certification um, capability has been added and, it, and is being you know, enhanced. There's a, a roadmap for it. Um, but what its intent is with regard to VNF testing is, um, is basically what you said, you know, it, it's focused primarily on the, the heat and the Tosca artifacts um, and, you know, the, the ability to onboard uh, the VNF and instantiate the VNF um, as opposed to, um, you know, functional testing where you're trying to run, let's say, test traffic through it. Um, and ensure that whatever the function in the black box is, is actually performing um, properly. So, you know, most of these tests have no prior knowledge of what the VNF actually does, so it would be difficult to validate its ability to do that, whatever it might be. Okay, so it, it, yeah, so that's it. very helpful. It, it, yeah, if, if you could try and find that roadmap that you mentioned that talked about the and I do think it's really important to, to separate the NFVI certification, the platform certification, from the VNF certification, the individual network functions on top. But it, it, if you could find a, a link to that roadmap for the VNF certification, where I, I understand that today it's, it's mainly Tosca or Heat um, artifacts, but if there's plans for adding more um, capabilities so, to it, I, I'd love to see those. So, yeah, so there's been a discussion about um, quote unquote um, OVP uh, 2.0 to help to meet the needs of uh, cloud native slash CNF slash whatever. And actually there's there's a, a meeting planned for the Prague face to face on Tuesday, January the 14th at 1500 UTC. Um, so there's a kind of a, a, an agenda being developed for that discussion uh, to talk about um, meeting the uh, about C, uh, OVP, CVC, and CNCF. And I can- Yeah, actually... unfortunately, I'm not sure we're gonna have uh, CNCF representatives there. We, we kind of found out about the meeting uh, late. At, at the very least, I am ha aiming to have a very rough uh, document to share with that group that I'm talking about, this nice. CNF conformance uh, concept, but- um, I, that's why I was uh, just trying to get as much background on it as possible, Trevor. And, and that kind of, uh, you know, kind of gives some insight to your question about Prague, right? Um, I, and Trevor, you, you can give me your opinion, but I, I don't think it's going to go into a whole lot of detail of, you know, the actual testing in these sessions. 
I think the focus initially is going to be what are the objectives first, yeah. Yeah. right? Agreed. Yeah. So let me just go ahead and throw out there, since since some of you will be there, uh, to please feel free. And and by the way, I mean Arpit is going to be with me in um, in China, so I know he can't make it, but I I will also aim to have a conversation with Heather this week and, and say this to her directly. But I, I do just want to communicate the relatively obvious uh, point, but I, I do think it's worth saying explicitly that uh, my strong, strong interest is not to have LF networking and OPNFB and OBP and CNTT uh, doing something different and uh, incompatible from what CNCF is doing. And so I, I think um, given the, the huge overlap in uh, membership and in uh, vendors and in operators and, and just the, 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 the general alignment there, um, it, it really uh, would be in everyone's interest if we can align around a, um, a program. And, and then, you know, all, all the details remain incredibly difficult that there actually is a ton of work that needs to be done and, and figuring out um, who is, is going to do the, that work and how uh, some some relatively dis difficult decisions uh, will be made, but I, I, I do just want to throw out that out there that there's no sense in which CSCF is saying, oh, we're off on our own, and and you know we understand telecoms perfectly, so we'll we'll just go do this without uh, any input from all of these uh, operators that are you know uh, actually the, the, the end users of all of this. I don't think you need to <clears throat> excuse me. I don't think you need to worry about that. Um, you know that that's already been a point of discussion, and no one wants to reinvent the wheel or or duplicate effort here. So, I, I think the intent well, is the famous to, last words though. I mean, that has sort of it, there is a, a pretty bad precedent in our industry of <laughs> people who still come up with uh, with multiple. But parallels. this time, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, I, but I, I, that is why I wanted to say it, even though it, it hopefully would go without saying. Um, so, uh, but um, it, it does sound like um, a lot of the focus in Prague is still going to be on the VNF certification, and, and as I think Taylor pasted in, that's why we're particularly interested in the VNF roadmap. That we would love to understand uh, how much of that would be applicable to a CNF roadmap. Uh, so, um, for search purposes, you know, CBC um, and OVP are the, the keys you want to search for there. And um, I, I can send you some links um, if I can fish your email address out of someone or from somewhere um, to give you some pointers there. Uh, but. Um, there is so there are requirements for VNF. Like there, there are fairly lengthy um, requirements for VNF testing um, in that context. Um, and then whatever state the the roadmap for the CBC is currently in. But, and it's all um, open and on the web, by the way. So whatever state any of that's in, you have visibility into it. You don't need. Um, yeah, and uh, I, I do want to point out that that is already a huge difference in terms of the CMTT work compared to where we were a decade ago. To have all of it on GitHub um, it is fantastic. Uh, okay, so I, I guess if I just went one level more detail here, um, could you, I guess, give your view? I, we had a conversation on the, the Asia call a couple weeks ago that I, I think everybody agreed that heat doesn't particularly make a lot of sense in a CNF context uh, because it's uh, so closely tied to OpenStack. But could you share your perspective on uh, Tosca uh, and um, how, how likely, uh, and again, I'm not looking for the official at t viewpoint here, but uh, maybe just sort of some color on previous conversations within OVP or, or elsewhere on how likely it is that Tosca would become the basis of a CNF um, certification. Because I, I, I'll go ahead and throw out there, and, and um, by the way, there was a very good um, PowerPoint doc. Uh, Taylor, Lucina, maybe you could paste a, a link to that into the, the chat or from um, into the, the, the tug Slack. But it was looking at, um, I think, five or six different 
um, implementations that had been used in the past for CNF. And so a couple of them were from Cloudify and there was a Tosca and then discussion of using Helm charts or, or others. And uh, you know, part of the concept was just that none of them were a great fit right now. Um, so I, I guess I, but I would love to ask that question in particular about uh, your view on Tosca and, uh, and CNFs. So, um, with regard to, you know, Tusca versus um, Heat, uh, personally, I haven't seen any, you know, or encountered any discussions on that yet. So, I, I can't really comment, um, or if I did, I'd just be making it up. Uh, but um, since Scott's on here, Scott, do you have any more insight into that by chance? You may be doubly or triply muted. I'm here. I'm here. I, I'm no, not yet. Maybe by the next meeting. As I dig. Okay, great. So, so uh, would anyone else um, want to maybe share an opinion on that, uh, Trevor or uh, any of our our longtime folks? Uh, on their thoughts it, on. I, I will keep an eye out for it. So, yeah, going and, and, I, and um. For example, there's a Red Hat engineer who, who did some interesting work on, on how you could adapt Tosca to uh, Kubernetes and, and create a custom compiler for it and such, but it, it was all speculative work. It wasn't a, uh, oh, that, let's go, everyone adopt this. And, and it was really a year ago, and I, I haven't seen any adoption of that approach. Yeah, that was, I think, uh, Tal Luron who, who had done that. It, exactly. Yeah, I don't Thanks think... For I don't think anything was material. Like I think he put the ideas out, but I don't think he he got the uh, attention necessary in order to proceed with it. That's my my understanding. I, I could be wrong though. Yeah, I, I actually got to chat with Tal in in um, Antwerp at the uh, Open Networking Summit, and, and and he he confirmed that. I mean, it's still, you know, the ideas out there. There's some, some slide decks and such on it, but it, it's not something that he's actively pursuing. So um, I guess the most positive way of putting it is that the field is wide open here for um, exactly what CNF certification should, uh, CNF conformance I'm going to start with should look like. I mean, I mean the, the kind of high level concept that I, I want to get across here is, as a, a concrete goal um, is, and I, I, I hope that we have agreement on this, is, is that um, there is a strong desire from operators to be able to purchase or license CNFs from multiple different vendors, have them all uh, interoperate and work on a single NFBI or you know, uh, uh, NC, NFCI, if you want to do it that way, uh, platform. Um, and so uh, the, the sort of end goal of saying, uh, I don't want to be locked into a single vendor solution, I, I think is one um, that I, there's probably pretty wide acceptance for, but the exact details of how those CNFs um, would be uh, uh, demonstrate conformance and, and what kind of interfaces they would be conforming to, I think remain up in the air. And so I, I have a proposal on this that um, is, is really meant as a, a starting point that I, I think is, needs, is going to need a huge amount of comments and, and feedback, and then we'll um, but but hopefully it's something that could uh, could could get the discussion going. Okay, well that was actually exactly what I was hoping to cover in terms of uh, my understanding of Prague, and uh, just giving a little bit of a a preview of of my thinking on the the CNF performance. Um, we're having a, and and I, I guess I, I will give one other insight into it where the the basis of the conformance work that I'm looking for is to have an open source uh, test suite and, and you can really think of it as a, a suite as set, set of set of different tests where the model is the certified Kubernetes program that CNCF has been able to orchestrate for the last two and a half years um, and so the key thing is that that uh, all of those tests are open source that um, anyone can download and, and run them to certify that their uh, Kubernetes implementation is conformant. And then because of that, uh, users can come along later and ensure that uh, their, uh, that the platform remains conformant. 
Um, and so uh, I, I think the, the combination of um, the uh, kind of distributed uh, crowdsourced validation of it, that people can't just claim conformance and upload incorrect test results and then uh, go operate in the market, that, that at any point it can be validated whether they're actually conforming or not, uh, that the tests themselves are open source, and then um, that because of it are open source, people can discuss and debate and improve them over time. And then also that the that the tests are following the um, upstream projects are all uh, really powerful aspects of that certification program or conformance program. And then the, the certification on top of it is, is um, relatively um, lightweight. Uh, it's all done via GitHub. Uh, there's, there's not an external testing center that you have to send your software to, et cetera. So that is the model that I'm, I'm basing it on and that I'm going to propose and, and that the, CNCF process has been pretty spectacularly successful where we have over a hundred certified vendors representing the entire cloud and, and enterprise software industry. So, uh, but interestingly, we've only ever certified the platforms of uh, the equivalent of NFBI. We haven't uh, actually certified the applications, which is the, the equivalent of the network functions here. And that's largely because of uh, a lack of demand for it and, and essentially a belief in that generally folks have found that containers tend to be interoperable um, on top of these different platforms, uh, which is really largely due to the Linux kernel uh, ABI. So uh, that's the, the preview. I do need to finish writing this up so that I can share it. Sorry, um, Dan, are you gonna post, the, would, are you gonna post that pr your proposal or how will we, what notes about? I, I will, so you'll, I'll be sending it to the mailing list and, and the GitHub and, and the-, the Okay, awesome. Uh, CNCF Slack. So you should see it uh, uh, certainly before the next call. Uh, and, and I'm aiming to get it out before the Prague meeting, but, but maybe not much before. And then my um, final, so I, I would just sort of open it up if there's anyone would like to respond to any of that or has any comments or questions or concerns. And then I, I might just ask um, uh, Taylor to do five or 10 minutes on the CNF test bed and some of the work that you're doing there um, uh, with Michael and others to uh, m make some improvements to it. Uh, and then again, for the next call, we can talk about uh, what our plans are for the, the Barcelona demo. So any, any comments, anyone saying, uh, no, that CNS conformance idea sounds crazy, you should just certify the heat artifacts. Go on. I think it'd be crazy to certify heat only. Sorry, say it again. I think we would be crazy to certify only the uh, the heat artifacts only. Like I, I, I do think that we need to look at the actual CNFs themselves. Mm-hmm. So you want to make sure the thing runs, right? And it, it doesn't just core or, you know, seg fault or whatnot. But, the, you know, the question is kind of how do you test function, you know, arbitrary functionality that, that hasn't been defined or declared in advance? Uh, you know, kind of the, I think the closest idea I've, I've had so far is to offer um, interconnections where, you know, the people supplying the VNS can also um, plumb in their own, you know, data stimulus generators and data sinks so that they can validate its, um, um, its functionality in the test bed. But for us to do it, it it's, it's still a question. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's effectively when on um, some of the interconnects that we do in uh, in NSM, we uh, we have a set of tests that are defined around a specific type of uh, type of workload because we we came to the realization that like we can provide things like okay is this is this going to provide some basic IP connectivity like we we could easily provide some of, some of that as a common basis, uh, but when it comes down to some more of the specific things, it's like uh, 
that some of the nuances of, of a specific CNF, it's also good for them to be able to inject their own behavior as well and not just rely on, on, uh, on solely common, commonly provided uh, infrastructure. And one of the reasons for this is uh, that there's also edge cases that have to be taken, uh, that people have to take a look at. And often the, the CNF or VNF provider is usually the, the best person or group rather to determine what those edge cases uh, may be. And especially when you look at it in the context of, I want to perform an up, a, a live upgrade or a live downgrade, then it's like, what do I need to make sure works? What do I need to make sure like, what things are likely to break because, of, because there's complexity there? I think that makes sense. And um, one of the I think ch real challenges with the uh, we found with the OVP program mm -hmm. is that it's it's pretty easy to come up with a bunch of of tests that everybody agrees are good tests, but to agree on specific uh, criteria which set a sort of minimum bar for uh, conformance. Uh, to, to do certification is pretty challenging for, for many reasons. Uh, one of some of them of which you've just mentioned. Um, and, and that's performance, right? Um, you know, so performance is kind of, performance or scalability is kind of a, a step above being able to test just the Functional capability. Uh, well, but, but even for even for functional capability, because you even you get into specific when you ultimately when you actually do testing is versions, right? And support of versions, and some vendors are are ahead of the versions that are implemented in the reference, and and, and all these kind of problems. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of perspective on, on my side as well. So I, I actually see uh, upgrading and downgrading as, as a feature as opposed to a scalability or, or a performance issue as well, because it's something that needs that has to be, it has written code. You want to automate it, you want to test it. Uh, if, it, if, it if you can perform the upgrade from A to B, then uh, as a feature, you know that, you know that works, you know, ignoring the performance or or scalability part and those have to be considered as well so was one i think that, that's why i specifically called that specific thing out was uh, uh from, from a from a conformance perspective and we can help out on on some perspective like we can say okay we installed your your so our suite of tests and your suite of tests and we've installed your application and we see it working we perform an upgrade we see it working or we see it break or we see this packet loss and it's, you know, it's like there's, we, there's things that we can, we can do to, to, to help along, along those lines. So I, this is, I think actually a really good segue into the CNF test bed. Um, and, and so I, I, because um, what I've been talking about so far is a um, conformance um, testing framework uh, or test suite. And um, I do think a um, performance test framework and also a um, installation uh, conformance or uh, installation testing, upgrade testing are all um, quite valuable. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, it, it is really the operators who are going to say what's, what's valuable to them or essential to them. But um, I, the, I, I do think that the CNF test bed is is um, potentially a, a pretty useful tool on this front because it's something where the entire test bed is open source and and publicly maintained and something that can be you know discussed and and um, optimized and such but then um and uh the it uh and, and very likely the installers should also be um, open source, but the actual CNFs themselves definitely don't need to be. And it is something where uh, someone could demonstrate on uh, using the test bed and say, okay, here's some code where we've shown that we were able to install this and uh, upgrade it and uh, the performance continued running and here's the downtime and such. So um, if, if 
Tara, that's enough of a segue. Um, would you mind uh, jumping in here and, and maybe just doing a five or 10 minute overview on, on what we have built and what some of the initial goals were for it? And then if you want to maybe extrapolate uh, how it could be, um, be used in some of these use cases going forward. Sure. Thanks, Dan. Um, uh, and I'll just mention that I, I'm going to um, be in a noisy place soon, so I'm still listening. But uh, you, you should go ahead and, and finish the call when you're done and, and address any questions. All right. So we've, we've kind of gone over, I guess, a lot of different parts of this. Um, on the CNF testbed. So it's it's on GitHub at um, CNCF and the CNCF org slash CNF testbed for folks who haven't seen it. And I'm gonna drop a link into the Zoom here. Zoom chat. So the, um, I guess, jumping back a little bit, some of the initial uh, ideas here uh, came from the the long term the long term focus was how do we build something and and new stuff as well as take existing code and how would you run it on a new platform what would that look like and so looking at a lot of um, projects over a year ago now. Uh, what what was available? So one of those was looking at um, ONAP. There was a ONAP uh, demo, and we actually started with that. And we've been doing a lot of other um, proof of concepts as well as um, ongoing work on packets. So how would we take something that's focused on telecom and and get it up and make it where um, people can contribute as a group? and and share everything so we started with that and got some of the um the sonap demo up to a point it was based on openstack and there was multiple levels of virtualization but it was kind of a good place to start um, and and then we ended up breaking things down uh, into the components like the actual use cases the vcb use case and splitting those out and how, how, where could we uh, go with this? So we actually broke it down into the individual pieces, the components. Um, some of those are VPP-based network functions. Um, so all open source there. And um, what we have now is the capability to build what would be maybe the NFVI platform as a base. Um, you can using cube spray so open source kubernetes uh, production grade deployments um, we can deploy onto packet different uh, machines uh, types including some that have uh, quad intel NICs that we can uh, put together for different use cases and you can build the whole thing including the net the networking aspects um, different VLANs that you may want for segmentation and build all of that out. So that's kind of the, the platform and make that reusable. Um, this some, somewhat, some of it is, I, I don't want to exactly say lowest common denominator, but the focus was what's reusable. So I want to compare this a little bit to the RA2 or maybe we could say the OVP, CNTT, all that work, that reference implementation there's some overlap there, but as uh, someone mentioned early on, the focus is a little bit different. Um, the collaboration and the proof of concept aspect, I think it's the exploration. So that's kind of the idea here. Um, what would a cloud native platform and applications, what would these cloud native applications that provide the functionality, what would that look like? So the, a lot of this is still being understood. So as we move from physical to you know different platforms, but virtual, whatever else, you're going to add new functionality or add new um, processes, and um, you're going to drop some. So 
what would that look like? And I think that's part of the, exp um, the exploration exploration here. Um, so we've wanted to make sure that you can use plug in and try out different things. Um, network service mesh, Frederick uh, was mentioning some of that a few minutes ago, is one of them um, that we're using. That's a add-on or extension to Kubernetes to expand the functionality. So being able to show stuff like that. And that's really been the focus in the kind of the last six months is making things a little bit more uh, pluggable for people to join and, and um, have part of that. So uh, we've been talking about heat templates and Tosca and stuff on the conformance. So on the Kubernetes side specifically, because we, we do have OpenStack um, software in the CNF testbed that you can use and run and see how some of the VNFs work as well. But on the Kubernetes side, um, it's using either Helm charts or um, Kubernetes uh, YAML manifest files that you can describe what a use case is or what a deployment looks like and have those reusable between those uh, different tests and making that more usable for someone to come in and add maybe a very simple test, test the Intel device plug-in for uh, Kubernetes and how would that work? Or a more extensive one that may use that and, and do like SRV and a, a full use case and those different parts. So it's, if someone is new to these things, then it gives a way to step in at those different levels. And then if you wanna contribute, so at the start of the call, um, Dan mentioned, I won't really go into this much, but we have been looking at a Mobile World Congress um, demo and specifically some of the things that we're looking at um, that would be relevant to bring up with how do we do different use cases. Um, right now we're not looking at the RAND side, we're looking at uh, packet core pieces and there's a few different implementations that we're looking at, starting with um, some specific components within the packet core and showing how workloads would go across those and how we can manage connections in a dynamic way. And that's the main focus on this and then expanding out to say, um, again, a proof of concept so we can discuss this how would you have a cloud native packet core? How would you then connect that up with the different pieces outside and extend to have the, a full system? And that's kind of the goals. Um, and we have some proof of concept code that's been going in over actually the holidays and we'll be uh, tying more into that. Um, trying to not repeat things that we've already covered. We plan on doing, I guess, a, a few other things roadmap wise. We have some stuff with, say, uh, Multis and other, th uh, other examples for a uh, accessing different devices, um, SRV stuff. We have some of those in there already. There's um, IPsec examples in the test bed. Uh, a lot of other use cases that I think would be common on the, already on the VNF side, including the, well, I mentioned the ONAP demo. We have different types that would be similar. They're not exact, exact as we've moved over. So we're trying to move towards what we expect as practices and principles to be, you would follow this. I think some of the things we wanna add is topology showing uh, like CPU topology, um, separation of um, the resources and those type of um, things that are concerns in the telecom. And we have different, I guess, the different pieces and core components. And what we want to do is build out some of those use cases. And ideally get some feedback from uh, operators on what type of use cases would be interesting and workloads that you want to see uh, 
from the side of a cloud native implementation, it's like what what would we be talking about that's or concerns or anything else? You mean with the intent to do functional testing on those workloads or from what perspective? Um, I would say there's, if you're uh, like for AT&T um, or any operator, if you already have uh, platforms that you're using and if you're looking at any type of new technology or what it, what is, um, Potentially, I don't even say the technology, but the changing to use some new principles um, on how it's architected, or you're going to want to know what are the benefits and then what are the concerns. So, if there's anything specific you're looking at, like we were right now, the focus was a on the packet core and a specific part. How would this work and still be dynamic? Uh, how can you show that how, being dynamic and, and have the functionality for uh, these devices to find each other? But if, if there's anything specific that you're looking at, um, like concerns, how would we do this? In the past, we were looking at benchmarking for network performance and stuff, and how does that look? And we've been showing how you would be able to add different network paths, and that's where network service mesh is, is one of the examples. Okay, so potential challenges and... Yeah. and challenges, or we, we'd really like to see a, either a specific use case, or maybe it's even like specific examples of using Kubernetes or um, add-ons and extensions in a specific way that haven't seen something that meets the needs from an operator perspective. But generally speaking at the, the application layer. It could be application, it could be, I mean, some of the, the split up on the CNF test bed on how the new structure is for the test, we have split off what we think of as the platform. And that can tie in with stuff like, we expect the platform to have um, these SRV components and these um, other pieces like maybe network service mesh or whatever, and how that would fit to provide uh, functionality from a platform side. So definitely interested in the platform as well. Um, either way, really. It, it depends on the concerns and questions. Okay. Well, from the platform perspective, um, ultimately you should be able to see at least one um, aggregate telco perspective in the CNTT um, documentation suite. Uh, so at minimum you'll have that. Um, how that will transition to the, or apply in the application space is kind of an open question at this point. And, and this is Scott from AT&T. Um, Taylor, Dan, I think we had inter introductions at KubeCon from my VP, Ryan Benwick. And I, I think as I come up to speed, in all the space, um, as Ryan had intended, uh, I'll probably be providing some input from Telco AT&T perspective. To your point, Taylor. Right. That would be. I can't say right today, but it will. Uh, as I dig into all all this stuff here in the year, I'll, I'll definitely have perspective that I can share. Thanks. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Mark. Um, so, on the conformance testing side, I think um, the thing would be making sure that the test bed can run those different conformance tests. And I think part of what Dan was saying is having 
following the Kubernetes model where the tests are like an open suite. Um, from the platform side, that's um, potentially easier because uh, you can say here are the different components that we expect to be available in the APIs and, and test that. And um, we'd like to have something similar for the application. And I know earlier on the call there was um, mention of besides it runs and it doesn't crash as a, some type of workload. Uh, we'd like to be able to have that as um, possible. It may not be every t every use case and test or example, um, but potentially tagging a set of tests on the CNF test bed and say, these are compliant and we can run those is definitely something that we want to make sure happens. Taylor, hi, this is yeah, one question. Um, in the context of a more generic adoption of the test bed, and in particular in the context of a compliance test suite, um, what are your plans regarding decoupling it further from um, the packet focused deployment uh, scripting you currently have in place? So I personally would love to deploy the same things also like in an internal lab because that's just easier for me to get. We have hardware available, but it's incredibly hard to, <laughs> to, to get funding to run it in some other place. So I guess from a general adoption perspective, it would be very helpful to, um, to have some, some development in that direction. What are your plans on in that regard? I'm totally open to supporting other platforms. Uh, other, I guess, the physical under, underlying platform that it runs on. And it's if you or uh, other folks would like to contribute on that, that's really the main thing. The components that build out the environment, including uh, deploying any CNFs and um, connecting and everything else, all of those are split up. Um, they're is pretty pretty strongly uh, split to they're composable, but making making it where you can use different pieces. So if say you have a uh, you're already running Kubernetes, then you should be able to deploy the different test where it's going to come into places stuff like um, if you're doing hardware acceleration or something, then there are can be specific parts on that, but you're really talking about what tests are you running. Some of the tests are more of a functionality that's not, say, a performance specific functionality, then those should just run. And you should be able to deploy them on any Kubernetes. If it's something where you're running and doing an SRV and the SRV plugin that you're testing doesn't support the the network card, then that may not work. Um, stuff like VLANs and everything, um, those are things that are fairly dynamic as far as how they're configured for what you're running. Um, but it's it would be tying it into the underlying platform. So if you have a way to maybe pass stuff like that in, then it should be able to run. But it's, this is definitely a place that we want to go. And it's it's something where I know there's gaps, there's there's parts there, and we need kind of a driver for that, and potentially um, you know collaboration on access. We've talked about supporting stuff like um, AWS is bare metal and stuff, but for sure labs within a you know both vendor and operator side that would be great. And the the Kubernetes itself, or I'll say the platform. Um, provisioning itself that is something where it's I would say it's fairly generic um, what we do right now is we talk to the packet API for the networking portion of the packet API for setting up the uh, VLANs um, breaking say the default connections that are set up whenever you build out a machine 
and then reconnect them with however we're wanting. Like we want to support layer two and we're going to do our own VLANs or we want it disconnected or direct connection. And that's because they provide an API for their top of the rack switches. Um, I, I, I doubt that anyone is using a hardware these days um, that doesn't have an API. If you're using F5 or whatever you happen to be using, there's some type of API. So potentially even that sort of thing inside of a lab, we could provide some type of integration and then you could target, um, say, a specific switch or router or whatever it is to do configuration at the platform level, which would, I think would be awesome. So totally open to that. And if, if you want to follow up, um, I'd, I'd love to hear from you. OK, thank you very much. I think we're, we're here at the top of the hour. Um, there's a telecom user group Slack channel on CNCF Slack uh, tag. There's also a CNF testbed channel. There's some dev channels. Um, please join the CNCF Slack. Um, there's conversations there uh, going every day on this. And the next uh, telecom user group meeting is two weeks. It'll be at the uh, 7 p.m. China Standard Time. And I think that's about it. Hey, everybody. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Brooke Frischmeyer from Net Number. I had to jump in and jump out a couple times. Um, I, I got invited to this meeting um, via uh, a colleague here at Net Number, Patrick, and I just wanted to know who I can uh, send an email to so I can be on the recurring meeting and uh, jump in Slack and other collateral. Um, you can send an email to myself. I posted the meeting the meeting notes here it's it's in the um, meeting notes for the tag and, and that's taylor Who's, yeah this supposed... is taylor sorry okay i see it there thank you okay will do thank you very much and uh there's a telecom user group github you can find all the details there as well right and, uh, nice to meet you all by the way, thank you. Nice to meet everyone as well. Have a good one. Take care, everybody. Cheers.